when we were growing up, I had, uh, I went through a lot of dark places. Yeah. And back then, I didn't actually know what I was going through. Yeah. I went through a lot of um, uh, a body form uh, mm. issues, yeah. which today we identify, especially you know, with the plus size uh, people. But that was a huge issue, mm. and it's still a big issue for people with disability. Mm. Because as a child growing up, my legs were basically not being active, not doing yeah. anything. Yeah. So that means that the, the size of them just kept shrinking and shrinking and yes. shrinking. And I remember this becoming a more and more of an issue for me mm. growing up. And I used to wear shorts, mm. then I wear tracksuit bottoms on top of the shorts, and then yeah. I put on jeans on top of that. Yeah, too. And, and mm. then I'll put on, you know, stuff things into my pocket. I'll put like uh, mobile phones. I, I actually used to have pen. You know, I used to just carry a pen in my pocket just so I had pens. More in size. Yeah. Exactly, because I wanted people to to see me as able-bodied, yeah. and I, I was basically hiding my disability. But after a while years and years and years of doing this, I realized that I wasn't happy. I wasn't in a happy place. Yeah. And, you know, the disability was sort of affecting every single corner of my life. It's hard mm. to actually say or think of any part of my life that wasn't affected by the disability. Right. From education, yeah. from, you know, dreaming about what I was going to do in yeah. the future. Hey there, Lucrative Ladies. Welcome to the show, the Lucrative Lady Talk Show with me, your host, Pam Obasa. I'm incredibly excited about today's episode because I have an incredible entrepreneur who is with me today who runs a seven-figure business, is a software engineer, is an athlete, a professional athlete, but there is something unique about this guy. There is something special about him, and that is, of course, Actually, let me let you see it. Welcome to the show, Kingsley Ijama. He's actually my brother. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Kingsley. Thank it's so you good very to much. have you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for coming, Kingsley. You have, of course, uh, come with your own sofa, which I love, in two wheels. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love in your style. wheelchair. In style, in style. Yeah. Thank you, Kingsley, for coming to the show. I'm really, really excited um, to talk to you. Um, and today we're going to be really be talking about um, how to go after your dreams, yep. your goals, <clears> and everything that you want in spite of having a disability. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I want to warn our audience before, you know, some of them think, but I don't have a disability. You want to stick around and, and really, really listen um, to what we are going to be sharing because um, everybody has some sort of disability, don't they? Absolutely, yes. So if, if you can't reach the top shelf, that is a disability. <laughs> okay, so yeah. everyone does have a disability. Yeah. Some are physical, mental, yeah. and it, yeah. it varies of it all does. shades and everything else. Yeah. That's right. Brilliant. So before we get into that, I just want to talk about, just go all the way back, mm -hmm. right? Because you run a very successful business, mm -hmm. but it wasn't always like that. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people can look at you today and see that, you know, you, you might walk with crutches and you have a, a wheelchair, but mm -hmm. where did it begin? Where did, you know, what is your disability, if you don't mind yeah. sharing with us? All right, so my disability is polio. Um, and sometimes, you know, especially from family perspective, yeah. you know I have polio, but, you know, the detail of the polio. Because yeah. family is very accepting and, you know, you've always known me. So yeah. there's no reason to actually delve deep or into question. that question. Yeah. No. So this is the first time we've actually ever, ever asked that question. That's which is, right. Which is really an interesting question. So polio is, yeah. uh, is, a, is a virus, a polio yeah. virus, and it affects children below the age of five. Right. So. I had mine when I was nine months old before yeah. uh, you were born. Yeah. And polio basically attacks our central nervous system, so your right. brain and your spine. So when I lift my arm, my brain is telling my arm to, to do this, yeah. right? And does that through motor neurons. It yeah. communicates with the muscles that need to do that. Yeah. The polio virus attacks those motor neurons and right. basically randomly shuts them down. So everyone with polio have a different version of polio because it's I very see. random. <clears throat> so some people have, uh, like for me, it affected both legs. Yeah. So my brain tries to tell my leg to lift up and it can't. And then over years and years of the muscle not doing anything, it basically wastes away. Mm -hmm. And it affected my right arm. Uh, but polio, people with polio like myself are referred to as polio survivors. Because when the virus attacks your, your body, yeah. it randomly shuts down all these uh, 
you know, motor neurons that yeah. communicate with the different muscle groups. But the dangerous part is your breathing is controlled by a muscle group. Uh, your ability to, to swallow food, to yeah. digest uh, things is controlled by uh, these motor neurons as well. Yeah. So randomly they could get shut down. And yeah. if it does, a lot of people die from polio. So those people yeah. who are lucky like myself are polio survivors. Absolutely. <clears throat> There's a very, very high mortality rate with polio, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, the crazy thing is, um, as you know, a lot of people watching this don't know, but yeah. yes, we, we are brother and sister. And it's crazy asking you, what is your disability? Because yeah. I've never actually questioned that. Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was born and you yeah. were... You, I was there and I already had it. You yeah, already yeah, had it. Yeah. I, I'd never had a reason to yeah. ask or to even think or yeah. to think what's wrong with my brother. There was yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah. And Kingsley, I don't think I've ever shared this with you, but it was, um, you know, I was in school, I was in secondary school, I think year eight. Mm -hmm. And there was a girl called Amanda who mm -hmm. I was very good friends with and she came in and we were at the playground yeah. and you came in late mm -hmm. into the playground and she saw you walking with your crutches yeah. and she said, Pam, that guy over mm -hmm. there, he's always had crutches yeah. since we started school. All right. I wonder what's wrong with him and why his legs <laughs> aren't getting better. Yeah, yeah. And then I looked at her and I said, yeah, that's my brother yeah. and he... he he always has crutches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's just how yeah, he is. Yeah. And that was, you know, the memory that I always remember because there's a moment for people who don't have a disability where yeah. they start to question because they, you look at somebody in a wheelchair and you think, oh, yeah, it's temporary. Yeah. You look at somebody in crutches and you think, oh, it's temporary. They exactly. just, you just break your leg. Yep, You're going yep, to be yep. fine. Yeah. But you have to live yeah. with this. This yeah. is you. So growing up, I've obviously seen several perspectives mm -hmm. of this from you know a younger sister perspective yeah um, can you just talk us through emotionally what that was like um growing up and not being able to do some of the things that you know other people of your age you know yeah, at different yeah, yeah. times were able to do yeah absolutely so for um for me polio kind yeah. of um it took me to through different phases yeah. okay so there's the the disability itself which is polio which affects the muscles which basically means that they waste away and then there is the the, the denial phase yeah. for me um and i will explain it, it, it sounds really ridiculous you have a, a disability how can you deny yeah. that i have a disability then i went through a, a phase of embracing that uh, my disability and that's really when uh things change for me yeah. uh, for business wise for yeah. uh, personal growth and for sports yeah and then I went through the transformation phase where basically, which is where I am now yeah. and, you know, where I'm shining a light on, you know, the disability and saying to the world, yeah. basically, because you have a disability doesn't mean that you are your disability. Yeah. You, you're not disabled. You have a, dis a disability. Right. So those those yeah. two are different things. Yeah. So when we were growing up, I had, uh, I went through a lot of dark places. Yeah. And back then, I didn't actually know what I was going through. I went through a lot of um, uh, a body form uh, mm. issues, yeah. which today we identify, especially you know, with the plus size uh, people. But that was a huge issue, mm. and it's still a big issue for people with disability, mm. because as a child growing up, my legs were basically not being active, not doing yeah. anything. Yeah. So that means that the the size of them just kept shrinking and shrinking and yes. shrinking. And I remember this becoming a more and more of an issue for me mm. growing up. And I used to wear shorts, mm. then I wear tracksuit bottoms on top of the shorts, and then yeah. I put on jeans on top of that. Yeah, too. And, and mm. then I'll put on, you know, stuff things into my pocket. I'll put like uh, mobile phones. I, I actually used to have pen. You know, I used to just carry a pen in my pocket just so I had pens. More in size. Yeah. Exactly. Because I wanted people to, to see me as able bodied. Yeah. And I, I was basically hiding my disability. And every photo of myself as a child, yeah. and you could check this out, yeah. no photo shows my crutches. That's right. Yeah, so, I, know, I, re I remember. Yeah. So yeah. I, then I learned how to stand without uh, you know, holding onto crutches for photographs. Yeah. And that was like a huge success for me. Mm. And when we take photos as a family, I will stand there. Yeah. And of course, because of the way the, the disability works, your brain is trying to communicate with your leg. Yeah. And you sort of, you have learned how to manage, then it starts shaking. Yeah. And I'm waiting for the photographer to finish. Yeah. Like, keep, keep going, and I'm smiling like that. Go on, yeah. go on. <laughs> shaking, shaking. And then, but after a while, years and years and years of doing this, I realized that I wasn't happy. I wasn't in a happy place. Yeah. And, you know, the disability was sort of 
affecting every single corner of my life. It's hard mm -hmm. to actually say or uh, think of any part of my life that wasn't affected by the disability. Right. From mm -hmm. education, yeah. from you know, dreaming about what I was going to do in yeah. the future. Yeah. You know, I actually think, okay, I want to be, you know, the typical African parents mm -hmm. want to be a doctor, a teacher, a solicitor, yeah. and so on. But I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to help other people yes. in my situation. And then I thought, well, I said, doctor, I have to run from one mm. ward to the other. Yeah. How can I How do that? You, you know, mm. I'm, I barely walk on crutches. And if it's very slippery, uh, I mean, how can I actually, the logistics of doing stuff, of standing and operating and doing things. Uh, so I knew that my future was almost uh, predefined uh, because, of, because of the disability. Yes. Yeah. You know, Kingsley, it's, it's crazy when you talk about, you know, the picture of I want to be a mm -hmm. doctor, but my mind is saying because of my disability, how yeah. would I move from A to B? Yeah. And, you know, really makes me think about those who are watching who don't, might not have a physical yeah. disability, but who still have that mindset of, mm -hmm. I want to start a business, but yeah. my mind says I can't focus. My mind says I'm a single mom who's going yeah. to look after my kids. My mind says I will get no support. How yeah. would I do that? Exactly. So yeah. um, how did you get over that? Because you didn't become a doctor. Mm -hmm. You became super successful yeah, yeah. you run a seven figure yeah. business you own yeah. you know an incredible business which we're going to talk about in a moment yeah but how did you get over that because for you to move from where you were to obviously the incredible incredible guy i call my brother yeah. today mm -hmm. that was a big shift what was that okay so i embraced my disability mm -hmm. and like we said earlier everyone has something that mm -hmm. they see as the reason why they can't move forward. Mm -hmm. So this could be race, could be gender, right. this could be your belief, sexuality, it could be sexuality identity. Right. Yes. There's so many different things that hold us back. Mm -hmm. So what I basically did was embrace my disability. Yeah. I, you know, just a quick backtrack. I remember the, the, the months leading up to mm -hmm. us, you know, relocating from from lagos to to london wow you know? yeah so so yeah Many I, was, I was 14 years old so i was, I, I anyway, was very young yeah, so yeah anyway, your memories are better than mine i yeah. remember that period yeah. so clearly because yeah. that was a time when i wanted uh, a miracle more than anything else mm. i went to church because i i thought oh gosh we're leaving africa yeah okay where uh you know i was one of the other disabled people yeah and we're going to an unknown place. Yeah. And I thought I would be the only disabled person ah. there, right? So I thought if I can get healed, yeah. then I wouldn't have to explain my disability to anybody else. I, I would see. just blend in. And I said that I wasn't eating, I was fasting, I was doing everything possible just because my whole future, my whole life was basically shaped by yeah. disability. I didn't see how that could be an advantage. Yeah. So now I'm saying I embraced my disability. So the, what I meant uh, by that is, I started moving in different circles of people, right. and they sort of opened my eyes. Right. So yeah. I picked up uh, sports. Yes. That was one of the best things I ever did. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I played a bit of wheelchair basketball to start off with. And I remember the freedom of sitting on the chair yeah. and just playing the ball, yeah. and I just had you know, it was a different dynamic, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. The things that worried me the most, such as, oh, uh, is it raining outside? Is it slippery? Do I yeah. have to be very careful? I didn't have to worry about those anymore. No. I would just move around on, on, on a wheelchair. But I still felt, you know, I'm not disabled. Once I get out, the, I took my crutches, I still mm -hmm. went back to the, the same insecurities I had previously. Yeah. And then one day, mm. I was speaking to one of the basketball players, yeah. and I, I wanted to to travel Europe, I wanted to mm. do different things. So I worked as a software engineer, and that is successful, mm. and I wanted to travel, yeah. see the world for myself. At this point, I, I went through uh, a breakdown in, the, in my long-term relationship marriage yeah. after 14 years, so I just wanted a break from everything. Yeah. So I, re I quickly realized if you're disabled, you can't just randomly have a break. <laughs> I thought, well, I want to go, I want to do uh, Latin America, travel to yeah. come back to Spain. And But how can I do that? Mm. How can I carry my bag, carry everything I need and actually be independent? Yeah. You know, I couldn't, I wanted to discover myself. I couldn't discover myself yeah, yeah, because yeah. I'm disabled. I, I, I wasn't happy about this. Yeah. And I said, speaking to the guys at the, at the basketball, uh, one of them, Jordan, a French, a French guy. 
And he said to me, why haven't you got a wheelchair? Mm. And I looked at him and I said, dude, because I don't need one. Yeah. He said, why? He, he was in the same situation as myself. So he yeah. had a deformed left leg. Right, so, so he had polio so as well. Not polio, but just uh, deformed. Uh, right. Um, uh, when he was born, he just, he just conditioned yeah. what he had. But he can walk, but not far. So mm. he needed a wheelchair to travel. He said to me that he traveled through Europe oh, wow. on his wheelchair. I said, well, on your own? He said, yeah. Mm. And I started thinking about it. And he said, if you get a wheelchair, mm. I promise you, your life will change. He was sitting wow. with his girlfriend, uh, his wife now, and they were basically explaining to me the reason why I need to give in. Yeah. And I kept saying to them, dude, I'm trying That's to crazy. become the opposite. Independent, yeah. And you're telling me to become, to become independent, I have yeah. to be on a wheelchair. Be dependent. <laughs> yeah, 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 be independent. Oh. So anyway, I gave in. I ordered uh, my, my wheelchair from the US. It took about three months. Those were the longest three months. Wow. It cost thousands of pounds to order them. And I was, I was like, I'm invested in this stuff that yeah. I'm trying to run away from. I'm trying not <laughs> to appear to be disabled. Yeah. But you're making me get the wheelchair, which will make me look disabled. Yeah. He said, don't worry. I, pro tr I pro promise you, you're going to enjoy this. I got the wheelchair. I bought myself a bag that attaches to the back of the wheelchair. Yeah. That was my backpack. And I was away to Madrid. My oh, first time. Yeah out of the country yeah independent on my own wow. without anyone else and that for me was the first time i embraced my disability yeah so, so, sorry kings mm -hmm. even that in itself mm -hmm. i mean just embracing you know the thing that you are trying to run yeah. away from yeah and it's almost like facing your demons yeah. it's mm -hmm. like saying you know what instead of me running away from this thing how about if i just stood and accepted it or if I fight it like yeah. basically you've got to do something about the yeah. situation mm -hmm. it's not always I think that a lot of people are in situations where you know um it's easier to run away yeah. but in this case it's a matter of no actually if you just if you just face the yeah. truth yeah of what absolutely. is happening absolutely that's where your breakthrough is if you think about yeah. it as a person with disability trying not to look disabled <laughs> it sounds a bit crazy and yeah. there's no way I could have won that. that I was always no. going to be the best version of myself was going to be a fake. Yeah, that was yeah. the best. The best would have been, oh, you've done so well. Or oh, look at all these pictures and photos of you yeah. as a child. Yeah. That's a good, you know, good trick. Yeah. But deep down, are you happy? Yes, are that's you, right. Are you still? Uh, is something still holding you back? Yeah. And the answer was always yes. Yeah. So on that trip. I saw the world from a different eye. Yeah. I saw the world from a point of view of somebody that people could look at yeah. and say, he's disabled. Because yeah. prior to that, the biggest compliment I ever got from anybody was, oh, did you break your leg playing football? Oh, my God. And that was a compliment. I, I, and I, of course, I said yes. Oh. <laughs> Immediately. Because that meant that you know, yeah. I wasn't admitting yes. I'm, I'm succeeding in my illusion or delusion yeah. Of who, yeah, who, my, who my disability was, and, and even then, even just it wasn't just that; it was the fact that it would end that conversation. Yeah, because the moment you say no, I did. It yep. was polio. It's yep. then more questions. Yep. Oh, when did you have polio? What exactly. is polio? And exactly. That's not a conversation exactly. you want to yep. get into. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. So that changed. That changed everything. So when when I I say to myself, okay, I want to become this new person. My whole my my future uh, self and my dreams and every barrier that I thought was preventing me from moving forward just vanished, just, yeah. just disappeared. Yeah. Because now the best version that I can be of myself is literally me. Yes. And after that holiday, I've, I've gone around, I've traveled solo yeah. and I've done Amazing. so much more yeah. and I've experienced life and I've done other things. Yeah. And, you know, even looking back now, yeah. my... My girlfriend, yeah. uh, Diana, uh, she's uh, Brazilian, and Brazilians love the beach. Yeah. They love bikini. They love the sun. You know, <laughs> yes. I can generalize. <laughs> but when we're together, she was always when we, especially when we travel to hot countries. Yeah. And I had my layers on. Oh, uh, I, have, yeah. I have a vest on, and I have layers. And yeah. she said to me, oh, "Amor, por favor, is it my love? Please take <laughs> take us take the the layers off." Put on shorts, Aww. and of course she didn't know yeah. about the body form issues. Yeah, you know. And I said, no, 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 don't worry. But she said, you're making me hot. Just looking at your kings is making me really hot. <laughs> I said to Aww. her, don't worry about it. 
And then she kept bugging and bugging. Yeah. And then I, I thought, do you know what? As I'm trying to show the world, yeah. you know, my true self, I just gave in one day. Yeah. And I got shorts. I think we were in Barcelona. Yeah. And I went outside with it. Wow. And how I, did that feel? I was like, so I've spent over 30 years on this earth and I've never felt the breeze oh. on my legs. And the, yeah. and usually I sweat like a pig, you know? But <laughs> for the first time, I wasn't. She yeah. said, that's because the heat has an escape, you know? <laughs> the heat goes off of your head, it goes off of your feet. I said, okay, thank you, you know? But it was like, it was a huge relief. Yeah. And the biggest fear I had was that people, you know, people are going to be staring. Nope. People look, man, you just carried on. Yeah. And then I realized that what I was doing without knowing it was saying to people that disabled people are also, or people with disability are also tourists. Yes, they are also that's right. They also have spending power. That's and right. And they're also represented in the economic system. That's and right. And that alone was a message. Yes, that's I, right. When I thought about that, I thought, okay. So this is something I should be thinking of doing yeah. more and more and more. Because yeah. when you think of a disabled person, um, uh, someone on a wheelchair, yeah. you think uh, someone's begging for money. Yes. You know, oh you think someone who yeah. needs help. Someone who's someone, bound, yeah, constricted. Who's constricted, you can't move. Yeah. That's right. And here, here yeah. I am, someone who has, you know, through, uh, you know, good fortunes of growing up in, yeah. in a country like Great Britain where you know, things are accessible yeah. and being disabled doesn't mean that yeah. you can't get a job, you can't yeah. pursue your dreams. Yeah. Here I am with all those advantages and all the benefits of that. Yes. And I was hiding and I was yeah. trying to be an able-bodied person yeah. where I could actually, you know, sh show to the world that having a disability doesn't stop your mind from working, That's doesn't right. stop your dreams from coming true. You can, you don't, you know, I mean, the, the 37th president of the, of the United States, yeah. uh, Franklin uh, Roosevelt, he was diagnosed with polio. Oh, okay. Right? And just like uh, the way that I didn't want any photos taken of me, yeah. he did not want photos taken of him on a wheelchair too. Mm. So if I grew up knowing you know, people like him mm. uh, were diagnosed yes. with polio, then I could think, do you know what? If he could be the president of the yes. United States and his disability didn't stop him, yes. having a business yeah. is, is the least... It's the least of... Yeah, it's exactly. nothing. Exactly, it's nothing yeah. compared to that. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, so that's, that, that was my embrace of my disability. Brilliant. Incredible. So you did pursue two incredible dreams, and I want to mm -hmm. quickly talk about them. One was in the area of business and the other mm -hmm. in the area of sports. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about sports mm -hmm. first, right? You are this year going to Tokyo 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. are competing. Yeah. And I, I just cannot forget the day we received the message yeah. um, from you as a family that you had qualified. I mean, all these years, yeah. um, you know, you've been training, we've been coming um, yeah. to various places yeah. to watch you row, yeah. um, cheering you on and supporting yeah. you. And then, um, the, the you know, the premise of Tokyo, uh, Tokyo 2020 yeah. came and it yeah. was, we were all hanging in the balance, like, yeah. is he going to make it? What's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. And you sent that message. And as a family, I think we were just like, just incredibly proud over the moon. So tell yeah. us what what did that process look like? Yeah. You know, in preparation, we're obviously yet to go to Tokyo, yeah, yeah. but you are going to be um, representing. Yeah. Um, who are you representing, first of all? Yes, I'm representing Nigeria. But Hence the, the green, white, green. On your wheelchair, uh, wheelchair. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, but there was a yeah. toss up at one yeah, point yeah, 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 where yeah. you had two countries fighting yeah, over yeah. you. So, correct? Yeah. So yes, I was training with uh, with the GB Great yes. Britain's. Um, uh, development squad. Yeah. And an opportunity came up uh, for me to represent Nigeria. Yeah. But I had to choose Nigeria because <clears throat> that was where the history was to be made. Yeah. So there's yeah. never been any male Paralympic rower in the entire Africa. Wow. Right? So the, the the FISA, the, the World Rowing uh, Federation, they, uh, I got an email from them yeah. saying, we know you have this, you're, you're with the GB development squad. We know this is what you want to do. But we're, we're just wondering, what would you think about representing your country of birth? But the funny thing is the week before that, yeah. my coach um, at Marlow Rowing Club, yeah. he said exactly the same thing. Oh, he wow. said, oh, do you know, I was speaking with uh, Sar um, Redgrave and uh, Steve Redgrave, and we were 
just asking, wouldn't it be great if Africa was represented in the upcoming uh, rowing Paralympics? And we thought, you know, why didn't you do it? <laughs> I thought, that's weird. This is now two completely yeah. separate organizations mentioning the same thing. And wow. it, was, it was a no-brainer. So, but that, you know, saying I want to represent Nigeria doesn't mean I've automatically qualified. I That's still right. have to compete yeah. against other nations, other countries yeah. uh, to qualify. But, but yeah, the dream started um, four years ago. Yeah. So four years ago, I had an interview <clears throat> with a radio station um, yeah. where I was basically saying, in four years' time, yeah. I am going to be in Tokyo 2020. I remember listening to that, Kingsley. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the power <clears throat> of words. This is the yeah, power yeah. of words. So that's why I've declared it. So I basically spoke it out, put it out in the universe. This is what I want to do. Uh, I want to be a Paralympian. I want to row. Yeah. Um, when you think of Nigeria, it, music, yes. uh, food, yes. movies, culture, culture yeah. mentioned. Football mentioned. Not rowing. Yes. It's not known for rowing. So, and I wanted to do do that basically, and yeah. and and show you know you know looking at that whole aspect of shining light on yeah. whatever you, you you think is going to hold you back. Yeah. So the best version of uh, of human body is is when you push the body to the to the limits yes. and of fitness and strength and the only way you can actually know is by competing against the best every single country can produce that's right so if you have a disability the best way to actually push your body is exactly the same process yeah it's basically saying okay so i have disability i have polio so i have all these motor neurons that don't want to communicate with my legs. Yeah. So I'm going to train them. Yes. And I'm going to train them to the best that they can ever, ever be. Mm. And then I'm going to compete against the best of in the every best. single world yeah. in the country. And I feel like that is my, my calling. That's yeah. basically what I am on earth to do, is to be the best version of myself yes. and to be that testimony to yeah. anybody who thinks that they can, they, that they're held back yeah. by something. That's right. You know, the more you leave things in the dark, the more they will hold you back. Yeah. Once you shine a light on them, yes. and you say to the world, "This is my vulnerability. This yeah. is this is this is the thing that I, I'm scared. I'm scared of the most. This is who I am." It's no longer That's what you're right. scared of the most. That's right. It's now exposed, and then yeah. you see other people who've gone through situations, yeah. and yeah. and that's how I got got myself. Um, yeah into the shape i needed to compete and to to qualify to qualify and of course you're going mm. to tokyo 2020 yep. this in year august. Yeah, yeah in august mm. absolutely and um, there's one more thing i want to touch on that we didn't touch on and that is mm -hmm. of course your business mm -hmm. um you started off as a software engineer mm -hmm. And you, um, which you learned, yeah. I remember going to your bedroom, which yeah, was yeah. always out of bounds because mm -hmm. I'm the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> but every time I would mistakenly <clears throat> walk in, you yeah. would be on your on your laptop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be on your computer, yeah. you know, working away. So you went from, um, I remember then, you know, just designing websites yeah. to taking <clears throat> it further to now growing a seven yeah. figure business. So we have a few minutes, um, very quickly. I just mm -hmm. want to talk about the process of that because you did it with your disability. Mm -hmm. You did it with your hangups and with yeah. all of those things. What was that journey like in yeah. terms of growing the business yeah. and growing it to the point where not only um, are you free, you mm -hmm. know, in, in your body, mm -hmm. you're also financially yeah. free and yeah. without, uh, it's not government yeah. Hand yeah. handouts, yeah. it's you have built a lucrative business, yeah. seven figure business, yeah. you know, with your disability. So I, I hand on her, I don't think disability has anything to do with, uh, with business. And, mm. but we, we use, we have things that we rely on as excuses. Yes. Um, but the, the main gist earlier said that every single aspect of my life was affected yeah. somehow by my disability. Yeah. And I remember uh, in school, um, at college actually, we had this, you know, careers um, day yeah. where yeah. basically you, you talk about what you want to do in the future. And I was still, you know, not sure. Yeah. I want to be a doctor, but I know I can't because yeah. I've told myself that physically I can't. Yeah. Know, but I'm sure if I research, there are yeah, many yeah, doctors yeah. Who, with disabilities. That's so right. my fear, you know, false evidence was basically appearing to be real, yeah. but it was just an excuse if, yeah. if, um, if I was being truly honest with myself. So on that careers day, I was really down. I remember feeling mm -hmm. very, um, very down really, not knowing mm -hmm. what I wanted to do or what I could do. Yeah. And I spoke to uh, one of the, the lecturers at, at yeah. college 
uh, Peter Chester. I still remember him today because he's, he's in, he, he basically is the, the reason mm -hmm. why I am a software engineer today. Yeah. So I, I spoke to him, I said, in a broke down, said, Peter, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm mm -hmm. tired of life. My, I don't know what, what kind of job I can do in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, my friends are working <clears throat> at JD Sports to get um, mm -hmm. money in the, over the weekends. I can't do those jobs because I can't stand you. I can't stack the shelves. What am I going to do? I, have, I don't know what I'm going to do. So he said to me, uh, his son uh, works for IBM. He said to me, uh, he's a computer programmer and he makes uh, 60,000 pounds a year. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, 2001. And he said, um, they're flying around the world, he has mm. his own house, he has... Basically, he was, he was wow. showing me something yeah. that I have never imagined myself doing. Mm. And he said to me, none of that requires anything to do with disability. He's his mind, he's his brain, yeah. and he just works. He says, you have, your hands work, right? I said, yeah. yeah. He said, well, you can be a, a computer programmer if you want. You could work for any company you wanted. Wow. So he sold that seed. Yeah. But he didn't end there. The next day, he got me a book. Uh, it was oh, called wow. ICT back then, Information and Communications Technology. And in the book, uh, well, that was how I learned my first programming language, ASP uh, programming language. So the book broke down everything step by step on how to code and how to learn. And I remember going home and, you know, just with this dream and this belief that this uh, stranger had mm -hmm. in me, I took the book. Went home, said thank you, and I said I just started reading through, right. just reading through, and I thought, wow, this is interesting. This is really cool. And the first uh, code I ever wrote mm. was for uh, a barber shop, okay. a booking system for my local barbers in Walthamstow in East yeah. London. And I learned to do that from the book. Right. So I thought, okay, I did it for free. I didn't charge because I just wanted to learn how yeah. this stuff worked. And that was the beginning. I just learned how yeah. to do that. And then we had a family uh, yeah. magazine, Glamour, yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah. Yes, yes, We needed that's to right. have uh, the designs done for yeah. the magazine. We needed a website. You had a business even back then. Yes, you know? yeah, yeah, um, that's right. Designing that's clothes. and um, My very first business ever. That's you needed right. A, you needed a website. I did, uh, that's did you right. Go to? Like, to you, you that's to right. Yeah, so, yeah. so I had real life uh, reasons yeah. uh, to apply what you were learning. That, what I was learning. Yeah. So I was making websites people making uh, design in magazines using InDesign and Photoshop mm. and basically yeah. that was that was the beginning of, yeah. of it. Yeah. So none of that was, you know, disability didn't come into question. But it could have done. It could have done if, yeah. if I believed That's right. that as a software and basically I think at some point I had this feeling, but how can I carry a heavy laptop for blah blah yeah, blah yeah, for yeah. blah blah blah? It's always it's always an excuse. That's right. Um, in there somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, so that was the beginning. Amazing. Um, of that. Amazing. Incredible. Mm. And, you know, today, you know, the, you know, your business is, um, Code Hands is absolutely mm. incredible. Mm. Um, seven figures. You are now going to Tokyo. You mm. are living your best life. Exactly. Yeah. Kingsley, mm. I'm so proud of you, first of all. Thank you very much, Pam Pam. <laughs> I don't say that enough. <laughs> I don't say that enough. And you joke too much, <laughs> but I don't. I don't say that. Yeah. I don't say it enough. I'm so proud of you, and I love you so much. Thank you. That like you are just it, you're inspiring to me, and I hope that other people can really, really take inspiration from you. Let me ask you: mm -hmm. there are five key things. You know, mm -hmm. let's call them five rules of success that somebody ought to take away from this when it comes to stepping out mm -hmm. of their disability. Bearing in mind that their disability doesn't have to be physical to do mm -hmm. with their body, but it's just stories. Let's call it excuses. Mm -hmm. So, what are five rules of success? success when it comes to um, going after your dreams, mm. going after ambitions in spite yeah. of anything that, that has gone wrong in your life, any excuse, what would, what would they be? Yeah. Okay. So my example, I just use my life as, a, as my example. Number one is if you know those weaknesses, yeah. those, uh, it could be a disability, it could be anything that you see as something that's prohibiting you from taking the next step, yeah. <clears throat> that is the first step. Yeah. Just knowing that yeah. is, is important enough. Uh, the second step is shine a light on it. Okay. okay? So yeah. if you feel that your, your gender is what's preventing you from doing stuff, yeah. speak out about it. Right. I love Put yourself that. in situations where you will be the only woman there. Yes. For me in IT, 
initially, as, as we said, I was making websites. Mm -hmm. Then I started building apps. Then I started contracting. Yeah. And then I started training people, thousands of people, to become programmers. Yeah. Now, when I was contracting, I was always the only black person in almost every company yeah. where I contracted in. Yeah. I could have said, okay, oh, I don't want to leave the comforts of London. Yeah. I don't want to leave London. I want to stay in London where it's more diverse. Yeah. I don't want to put myself yeah. in a situation. But I didn't. Mm. I moved to Liverpool. I mm. moved to the Midlands. I was yeah. in Leamington Spa. Yes. Um, all these places gave me the opportunity to basically lean into the things that I saw yeah. as my disability, you know, it's not just a physical disability, the the race disability, yeah. you know, saying, if I leave London, I'm going to face racism. Yeah. Or if I leave London, I'm not going to do well because I'll be the only one. No one will understand. Yes, it's true. But if you take action, yeah. then you open the door for other people just like yourself. That's right. Yeah. And there's actually an advantage to being the only one. Oh, yes, there is. There is. Oh, there's yeah. so clearly. Oh, yeah openly there yeah right? so so i would say one is identifying one is uh, yeah. is, is basically taking shining a, a light shining a light on it yeah um without shame mm -hmm. basically be the best version of yourself yeah always always yeah. because if i look at my myself now and myself before there's a massive difference mm -hmm. it's looking at saying okay 15 years ago I was this person trying to be someone else. Yeah. Now I know my my quest in life is so simple. Yeah. It's literally live my life yeah. unashamedly, unapologetically, yeah. and just to the max. Mm. Everywhere I go, I know who I am. Yes. It's really important. So knowing who you are is key. Yeah. When I when I'm somewhere, I was in Brazil last week. Yeah. And I was going through uh, Copacabana uh, Beach just pushing along, and people were looking at the wheelchair. Yeah. And they were like, oh, wow, that, that's really cool, that's really nice. Yeah. And I thought to myself, for the first time, mm. these guys are seeing disability from a different point of view. Yes, that's right. They're seeing a person with disability as somebody who has a spending power, and yeah. somebody who has another life other than the one that we imagined yes. that they will have. Yeah. And that only comes from living your full potential life. Definitely. Full life. Yeah. The other is the whole 80-20 uh, rule, yeah. Pareto's rule. So basically, 20%, uh, if we're using business, for example, 20% yeah. of your customers are responsible for 80% of your profit. Okay, that's right. That sort of stuff, right? Yes. So being your authentic self changes that. Mm. An example was, as a person with disability, we still need to date. We still need to yeah. be on social media. We still need to be on... Uh, Tinder, yeah, but you're judged on Tinder based on what visual that's right on who you are, just yeah. like that. So, what happens is a person on wheelchair puts a photo of them like that, yeah, right? That's right, so you don't see the wheelchair, that's right. Mm. But then, deep down, they're scared. So, yeah. now you've been chatting for a while, you've arranged to meet. Oh, At what point mm. do you say, Oh, by the way, I am disabled, you know, yeah, so you just rock up on your wheelchair and then they look at you and they say, Oh. You are disabled. Yes. And then you say to them, oh, yeah. Oh, you haven't got a wig on. I didn't know that. You know? Yeah, so, it's, it's, it's not the same thing, but... So, you see what I mean? Yeah. But that being your authentic self yeah. is taking a photo and showing to the world, yeah. I am disabled. And yeah. guess what? The people that you will meet will be the people that are 100% yes. and not people that are you know, randomly knocking on doors and hoping that you're going yeah. to convert everybody. Yes. So no, being right. smart, yeah. you know, putting yourself in that 20% yeah. is being authentic, yeah. always. Yeah. You know, so if, if mm -hmm. you feel passionate about, you know, the planet, the earth, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, being a conscious buyer, yeah. let people know. Yeah, Because that right. way you're attracting the right group Yeah, you attract your yourself. tribe, yeah. yeah. That's right. So I would say that was, that was, that was yeah. a big a big aspect for me yes. in my life. Yeah. And I did the same. I went to a Tinder once and I met somebody. And she said, <laughs> oh, you're disabled. And I was like, I know I should have. I was planning on saying something. <laughs> I didn't know how to say it. But everything changed. I remember I'm not because I'm, I'm in a happy relationship now. But everything changed when I updated my profile. Yeah. And I 
put my desire for it to become a, a Paralympian. And so oh. when you read all that, you can see yes. the only people that will, will swipe for me are people who know me. And yeah. There was no need for me to be nervous or to try and explain myself to anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the last point is consistency. Yeah, that's right. I think is is key. Um, anything you're doing, we talk about me as a programmer. I've been doing it since college, even yeah. school. Yeah, that's right. So fine. when we came here in our year eleven, um, I remember I was passionate about computers. Yeah. I wrote everything, uh, mm. my assignments, and I typed it up. Mm. I was interested in how things worked. I couldn't understand that they had a room full of computers yeah. and kids didn't want to play with them. Yeah. And so I've always been consistent yes. uh, with that all the way through. Yeah. So if for me, success is consistency, never giving up and just yeah. keep, keep going year after year. Absolutely. And that is absolute key. Mm. That consistency, whatever mm -hmm. it is that you are doing, if you just keep doing it, doors yeah. will open for you. Absolutely. The one thing that you haven't mentioned mm -hmm. and but that you are is that you use humor a lot. You found so much joy in yeah. your life that you know you have you have so much humor. There's just so much laughter whenever I'm around you. Whenever when anybody mm. is around you, they need to be prepared to laugh a lot. They need to be prepared that you're going to take the mick out of them. They need to be prepared that you know you're going to have a belly. Your belly is going to be hurting because yeah. there is just so much joy. Yeah. And that is the opposite of yeah. people who are disabled or who yeah. are constrained yes. by their darkest desires. Yes, the victim yeah. mentality. Victim, victim mentality. Yeah, that's yeah. right. No, I'm not a victim. Yeah. Absolutely. Not anymore. Not anymore. You are a victor indeed. Kingsley, it's been amazing um, having you. Everyone. Now, you are going to um, Tokyo in August, which is That's incredible. Yep. Now, mm -hmm. I know that my viewers are going to want to support you and follow mm -hmm. you. So if they want to find you, where can they find you? So um, type, go and search Lagos to Tokyo.com. Oh. Uh, you can follow my journey on there. On YouTube channels, you could check uh, Work It. Yeah. Um, no Excuse, Work It is a channel I've just started. So the idea basically is to show the, the journey yeah. and to, have, to show some exercises that you can do for yeah. anyone to get fit. Yeah, and nice. Yeah, so Brilliant. find me on that. Fantastic. We're going to put those in the description and on the screen. So they're going to find you on your website and on YouTube yeah. and follow your journey and follow you to Tokyo. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kings. Thank you. Uh, bam, bam, bam. Amazing. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, lucrative ladies, as you can tell, um, this guy is, is really my heart. I'm so grateful to have had him on the show. Um, absolutely inspirational. If you are in a place, if you're in a dark place and you need um, you need to step out of it, you need to work it. That is Kingsley's message. You need to work it without excuses. So leave all the excuses behind. Identify what they are and shine some light. Go out there in spite of what you think is holding you back and just be you. But bring to the market what the market needs and your tribe will find you they will follow you they will buy from you they will support you so go ahead and do that thank you so much if you've loved this give it a thumbs up subscribe to this channel and make sure you come back and watch all of our other episodes thank you so much for um, joining us today kingsley thank you thank you thank you uh, love you, you, love you love welcome you.